What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy and welcome back to The Savvy Show. So today, you know, I feel like I got a few SCPs under my belt. I watched a few, so I think it's about time that I watched the SCP Foundation Explain. Talking about everything about the SCP because if guys didn't already know, I kind of jumped into this blind. I was always interested in SCPs. However, I never like actually read about the origins or like actually got like, you know, deep into like the background of SCP Foundation itself. So I feel like this is the best time since I got, you know, a few graphs with the stories. I want to really find out the origins of the Foundation itself. So that is what the video will be about. We're going to be reacting to the SCP Foundation Explained. So if you guys are excited about this reaction, please feel free to smash that like button blue. It means the world and it takes less than a second and it's free. So if you do enjoy my content, you do enjoy the reactions along the way, it will mean the world. And also you'll be supporting the channel and you know what I'm reacting to. So yeah, it's killing, it's killing two birds with one stone. Also, the link to the original video will be in the description below. Like all the videos that I react to, the original links will be in all the descriptions. Mind you, check out the original content creators because, you know, without them, there'll be nothing to react to. So with that all out the way, let's get the show started. Alrighty, SCP Foundation explained. Let's get it. In an undisclosed location, a woman is being tortured. The methods of her abuse are too horrific to be described and her torturers are death row prison inmates, the absolute worst of the worst. This woman's torture is constant, and procedures are put into place to make sure she never becomes accustomed to the pain. If ever her torturers express sympathy toward their victim, their superiors will have them removed and replaced. If they try to rescue her or put her out of her misery, they themselves will be shot without hesitation. Holy the shit. The woman being tortured is known only as SCP-239-6. Okay, I was about to say she must be SCP. I'm like, this is this is like out of left field. What the hell? And worst of all, she's pregnant. The cause of her eternal torture, the SCP Foundation. And you'll be shocked Damn. to learn that when all is said and done, these are the good guys. Because if they ever stop their brutal treatment of SCP-231-7, a treatment codenamed Procedure 110 Montauk, she'll give birth to a creature that will destroy the world as we... I just like how they're just saying all these things like uh, Procedure 110 Montauk. Like, like, we know exactly what that means. <laughs> Yo, I'm glad I'm just, you know, reacting and, you know, diving deep into the explain video because I need to figure out a lot of stuff that's going on, especially the terminology they be using. Like, whoa. <laughs> know it. This is just one of the many examples of the objects and entities under the watchful eyes of the SCP Foundation, a mysterious group that strives to achieve greater good by any means necessary. And we do mean any. What you're about to hear is above classified. And be warned, what is heard can never be unheard. Unless, of course, the Foundation gets its hands on you. Uh -oh. So what is the SCP Foundation? In the most basic sense, the group's mission statement is right there in the SCP acronym. Secure, contain, protect. It's okay. the task of the Foundation to, in their own words, contain anomalous objects, entities, and... Uh-oh, don't be things showing off. don't make sense. Things that don't belong. Things that simply don't fit in with our perception of reality, and some things that pose an existential threat to all human life. They refer to these contained anomalies as SCPs, each of which is accompanied by a number. This is a broad... We remember that SCP. Oh my god, the... The Plague Doctor? That was a good one. An umbrella, as an SCP, can range from benign or even actively helpful to downright apocalyptic if ever released. Much like Scarlet King? Men in Black, often reported by witnesses in connection with alien oh my sightings, God. the Foundation works in secret to maintain a sense of normalcy at all costs, knowing the chaos it would cause if any of the anomalies they're harboring ever become public. Oh my Take, God. For example, SCP-500. To the untrained eye, the object is just an unassuming prescription pill bottle. The kind you'd see in medicine cabinets the world over. But the pill... Bro, it's just crazy. I haven't... Obviously, I haven't seen this SCP, the one they're talking about right now, the pill bottle. But it's just crazy how, like, it could be, like, just a, a crazy creature like the Yule Monster and then just a regular prescription bottle. Like, what? Like, it, it could be anything. God, the imagination of some people. ...in this humble bottle are unlike any earthly medicine. They can cure quite literally anything, from cancer to a cold, within two hours. But at the time of this writing, there are only 47 pills left. The power to cure all disease, a privilege denied to even the richest and most powerful yeah. in society. A veritable <laughs> grail. Can you imagine the violence and horror that would break out in trying to obtain them if their existence ever became public? The SCP Foundation... Wow, that's an interest in SCP. Mainly because it's not bad, you know, by itself. It's bad when there's other people 
you know, that are dealing with the SCP. Like, it's just a pill bottle, you know? It could cure everything, which is something good. But it's chaos because everyone will be fighting for it. So it's dangerous in that sense. Oh my god, this this is crazy. I really want to see that one now. ...works in secret because the collective mind of society just couldn't handle the knowledge of what they're dealing with. They work with the approval of all world governments, effectively placing them above international law. Essentially, there is no human authority above the Foundation, because without the Foundation's work, there would be no humans left to govern. To understand the basic operations of this above top secret organization, we need to delve a little further into that secure, contain, protect slogan. <laughs> secure refers to the foundation's practice of constant global surveillance and observation in order to detect and intercept anomalous activity before it can interact with civilians or rival groups. Contain involves preventing the effects or influence of the anomaly from spreading by either, in their own words, relocating, concealing, or dismantling such anomalies, or by suppressing or preventing public dissemination of knowledge thereof. The latter can involve practices such as using advanced chemical compounds or technologies to delete and then rewrite the memories of infected civilians, or even committing mass murder if necessary to cover their tracks. Okay, we did see that. We did see that in the, the, the SCP with the IKEA. Um, trapped in Ikea when they found out that dude that first you know was free they wiped his memory after they you know made a fake alibi about why he was lo lost for three years so so this is basically just like men in black like this is kind of cool the SCP Foundation has in the past wiped out entire towns of innocent civilians to prevent dangerous information about the SCP spreading beyond their what? control. They can take lives at their own discretion and consider almost any crime to be permissible when the alternative is Armageddon. And finally, protect pertains to all operations meant to protect mankind. They have that much power to wipe out whole towns of people still residing in the towns. Yo, I know SCPs are dangerous, but like that is some, that's some power, power, bruh. And they're able to kill anyone like they, wow. I'm from the SCPs up to and including neutralizing. and destroying them when possible. Some SCPs, such as the infamous SCP-682, a nigh-indestructible genocidal reptilian, have proved to be almost impossible to destroy. Research is ongoing. Oh, yo, that's the SCP that Shy Guy fought. I forgot his name. We didn't go over his episode yet. But um, he's the one that could like regenerate, and he's like immortal. God, there's, there's so many interesting ones. I just need more time in the day. Some SCPs, such as the infamous SCP-682, a nigh-indestructible genocidal reptilian, yep. have proved to be almost impossible to destroy. Research is ongoing in many cases, as the Foundation explores any and all possible methods of reducing the threat of more dangerous SCPs. In order to help them categorize the thousands of strange and horrifying anomalies under their watch, the Foundation has created a system that organizes the SCPs based on the difficulty of containing them. The first of the primary object classes is safe, pertaining to SCPs that require little, if any, resources to safely and properly contain. Examples okay. include the previously mentioned SCP-500 Pillbox <laughs> and SCP-999, a benevolent blob of gelatinous orange matter. SCP-999 has what a playful, hell? almost dog-like personality. It causes feelings of happiness and euphoria in whoever or whatever it touches. It's even been used by the Foundation as a pacification tool to reduce aggression in other SCPs. What the, the hell? second primary object class What's is the bad part with which that? refers to any anomaly oh. that requires more resources to contain completely or where containment isn't always reliable. You quit. This is okay. the broadest SCP class, and the majority of sentient, sapient, or autonomous anomalies fall into this category. <laughs> a Euclid SCP might be something as huge, sprawling, and bizarre as SCP-3008. Okay, I really hope they go over um, Keter. I think that's um, a classification, but I wasn't too sure what that entailed. So I hope they go over that in this episode. Hey, this SCP appears to be a kind of anomalous pocket dimension hidden inside an IKEA superstore, which is not only significantly larger on the inside by approximately 10 kilometers, but also contains bizarre faceless entities which can become hostile under the right conditions. See now, an SCP can also be something as seemingly innocuous as SCP-294, which appeared to the untrained eye to be a standard coffee vending machine. 
However, unlike any other coffee machine, the input system on SCP-294 is a QWERTY keyboard. This SCP can manifest any liquid typed in on the keyboard, from standard drinks like coffee and beer to more esoteric compounds like sulfuric acid and disease-infected human blood. Holy shit! During extensive tests, one subject requested the perfect drink and was given an odorless, lavender-colored liquid. After consuming the liquid, the subject went into a state of euphoric shock. The subject later committed suicide, leaving a note which read, I'm sorry, but at this point, everything's just one big letdown. Sadly, subjects dying during the <laughs> Yo! Death, the SCP Foundation essentially has limitless resources, including access to countless disposable workers and test subjects. The most common of these are so-called D-Class personnel, which are death row inmates conscripted for the purposes of often lethal SCP experimentation okay. or... D class, so that stands for death row inmates. I remember when you um when you guys told me in the comments section that's what it meant. So that makes sense. That there is just not random people, you know, that just have this, you know, job. It's people that, you know, are about to die. Death row inmates. So I mean makes it a little bit easier, but still <laughs> goddamn. Containment. The next primary object class is Keter, described by the Foundation as anomalies that are exceedingly difficult to contain consistently or reliably. Okay. With containment Keter. procedures often being extensive and complex. This can either be due to being an extremely volatile and dangerous anomaly or just one that seems to defy known laws of physics or reality. Okay. It is thus extremely difficult to understand or contain. Scarlet the King Foundation has a vast number of secret facilities across the globe. And while the Keter class SCPs are not nearly as common as the Euclid class, they consume a great deal more resources to safely contain. One particularly terrifying Keter class SCP is SCP-354, colloquially known by the Foundation employees as the Blood Pond. Whoa. This SCP is a large pool of non-biological red liquid discovered in North Canada that appears to be a kind of interdimensional primordial soup. What makes Whoa. this SCP particularly hard to contain, as well as extremely frightening, is the fact that hostile entities periodically emerge from the pond and must be neutralized before they can escape the containment area. God damn. These entities have included a floating black sphere that can fire concentrated beams of deadly radiation, a 15-foot tall reptilian humanoid that seemed immune to gunfire, and a homicidal metallic humanoid nicknamed the Terminator by Foundation personnel. Okay, these are so wonky. I wonder if these um, creatures coming out of the pond are like SCPs in its own right, like they're creating them. <laughs> Most highly classified primary object class of all is Thaumium, which consists of SCPs used to contain other SCPs. This can range from SCP-7000-J, a book of Latin incantations bound in dinosaur skin that can summon various other entities, all the way to SCP-4006, which is the entire state of Massachusetts. Thaumium what the hell? SCPs are the most bizarre and esoteric of the anomalies dealt an entire state like goddamn dealt with by the foundation but thankfully they often pose less of an active threat than many of the euclid or keter class scps finally as mentioned earlier sometimes the scp foundation deems an anomaly too dangerous to contain and just needs to destroy it entirely a terrifying Ooh. example of a neutralized scp and a perfect illustration for just how strange and abstract the anomalies dealt with by the foundation can be is scp-4991 this SCP manifested as a series of bizarre posts across a number of websites about an apocalyptic event that seemed to be occurring on a different layer of reality and what? seemed to indicate that a kind of deadly parasitic and carnivorous insect was spreading like wildfire across the globe. How do you call that? death and destruction in their wake. The SCP Foundation neutralized SCP-4991 by tracking down, containing, and erasing all infected posts across the internet before it could spread too far. Who knows what would have happened if the Foundation hadn't intervened? As is often the case with SCPs, it's probably best just not to think about it. Okay, they technically didn't kill it though. Unless the SCP was the post itself, or someone behind the post. Because you just deleted the post, that doesn't mean you killed it. They should use another example. The actual structure of the SCP Foundation is surprisingly transparent. With personnel classification levels ranging from Class A to Class E, Class A personnel are considered vital to the strategic operations of the Foundation, and therefore are not allowed to be in direct contact in any way with any of the SCPs due to potential risks. Class B okay. personnel are vital to local Foundation operations on SCP test sites, and are only permitted to be in contact with SCPs deemed to be relatively safe. Class C personnel are field agents that have far more direct contact with the Okay, SCPs that makes sense. I was kind of confused because in the episode of the Plague Doctor, in that SCP, people were just going in left and right. And there were like, there was like a top scientist was, and other scientists was like telling him not to go talk to that SCP. And then he still went anyway. So I feel like those roles are kind of like, you know, 
they're lax. They're not as like strict because that dude was killing off everyone and anyone and everyone was seeing the plague doctor because they thought it was safe. Yeah. Have to put themselves at great risk in doing so. Class D personnel, as previously mentioned, are essentially cannon fodder thrown <laughs> into the jaws of death to discover more about the more dangerous anomalies on the SCP roster. And finally, Class E personnel are personnel that have been already exposed to the potentially dangerous effects of an unknown anomaly. Class E personnel are placed into quarantine until they're deemed fit to return to work or terminated, depending God on the damn. results of their observations. In terms of actual roles in the SCP Lab Foundation, the top of the pyramid are the O5 council members, Class A personnel who have total clearance and oversee all Foundation operations. Below them are site directors who manage the various physical Foundation facilities across the globe and report back to the O5 council. On site, researchers and containment specialists work together to better understand and combat the anomalies being housed at their particular facility. They're kept safe by the hard work of veteran security and tactical response officers ready to lay down their lives yeah. to prevent more dangerous SCPs from ever escaping Get and reaching developed areas. In the event that an SCP does breach... Did they really just try to put handcuffs on a shark? I mean, we, we gotta reel that shit back. Like, really? That shit actually just happened. Keeping and reaching developed areas. Bruh. In the event that an SCP does breach containment and oh escape or a new one is discovered, field operatives are dispatched by the Foundation to get the situation under control. These will consist of field agents who already operate across the globe and specialized mobile task force operatives. The SCP Foundation has eyes and ears everywhere. Their organization is blah, 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 blah. embedded in every facet of society, ready to strike and suppress an emerging anomaly before any ripples of its existence can reach the wider world. Even here, we've only really scratched the surface of the SCP Foundation's extensive and frankly mind-boggling global and historical operations. There's plenty of information about the Foundation online, many of which people assume is pure fiction. But <laughs> wouldn't that be the perfect cover for a real secret organization wanting to cover its tracks? As the quote says, True. the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Ultimately, the SCP Foundation is on the side of mankind, but that doesn't mean it'll always act in our best interests. Yeah. After all, if it means preserving the peace and getting another anomaly under wraps the foundation will hesitate to terminate you and everyone you know without a second thought. that's crazy you want to face off against the foundation itself or one of the anomalies they wish to contain is hell no to get away from me play doctor us, neither would end well for you oh speaking of which there's another scp we forgot to mention that's quite literally unspeakable scp 2521 is a creature that's made entirely of strange black tendrils that envelop and smother the creature's prey. No written records of the creature exist outside of pictograms because it immediately attacks and consumes any information produced about it. This what? includes speech, as the creature will appear and consume anyone who, oh God, oh no, it's, it's here, it's here, help me. Ah! Pay no mind to what you just witnessed. I, the infographic show narrator, am perfectly fine. We now recommend you watch. Bro. That SCP looks dangerous, but yo, this was this was helpful. This was helpful. They actually talked about a lot of the terminology that they use in you know the SCP, so it makes sense about like, you know, when they classify certain things, I can kind of know like how strong it is or like how crazy it is or how like weak or safe it is. But this is cool. They 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 also talked about a lot of different SCPs that I haven't you know dive deep in yet, and it just made me think about like I I wish. Hopefully, like, there's, maybe I might do it later in the future. Like, I'll do, like, versus, like, SCP versus SCP, like, which one's stronger. That would be kind of cool. I might do that on the channel because there's, there's a lot of creative ones. And, man, I just, I, I would love to see them go against other SCPs. Oh, my God. That would be crazy. So, if we don't find any um other people making, you know, content of that for me to react to, I'm probably going to make some because that seems interesting as hell. I really want to put them up against other ones and see, you know, what will happen. So without all out the way, that ends the explanation of the SCP Foundation. So if you guys enjoyed this reaction, please remember to smash that like button. Also remember to smash the sub button if you're not already part of the family. I'm going to be making SCP content daily, so you'll never be bored on this channel. So hey, it's killing two birds with one stone. So without all out the way, hope you guys all enjoyed the show. And I'll catch you on the next one. Savvy signing out.